Welcome to CRM Audio, the Dynamics 365 podcast with business solutions MVPs, George Dubinsky, Joel Lindstrom, and Sean, the CRM Hobbit Tabor. This episode of CRM Audio is sponsored by Alexa CRM. WordPress powers more than 25% of all the websites on the internet and is the number one choice for blogs, websites, and portals because it's open source, simple to use, reliable, and extendable. Dynamic CRM has become a de facto standard in sales, marketing, customer service, and industry solutions. Now they can work together thanks to the Dynamic CRM WordPress plugin built with love by the Alexa CRM team. Capture forms, engage your users and customers, all without writing any code. Control your site in WordPress, keeping your data in CRM. To build the plugin, Alexa CRM has created an open source Dynamics CRM PHP toolkit, unlocking the world of Dynamics for PHP developers. Download your 30 day trial from alexacrm.com forward slash plugin and instantly create a portal by connecting your CRM and WordPress site. We thank Alexa CRM for their sponsorship of CRM Audio. Okay, we're here live from Extreme CRM. And uh, with me I have, as always, our faithful George Dubinsky. Say hello, George. Hi, everyone. I have Gus Gonzalez from what's Elevate. What's up? Do people still do what's up? I don't, I don't think know. so. No. I'm, no, like, no. I'm bringing it back. Yeah, all right. I want to make it cool again. All right. What's up? What's up? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> all right, so we got our we, we have our He's special guest right. Ulrich Carlson. Listen, listen to this. Glad to have you here, Ulrich. Thank you. So uh, let so I, I and the have plant not, you didn't mention the plant. Oh, and the, the plant. plant. <laughs> we have a plant. We are here at the Swanky Island Hotel. Wow. We uh, uh, very nice, uh, very nice room. Very but, luxurious uh, two star. Unfortunately, <laughs> I've been working, and I haven't been able to come to the uh, session. So. Let's start off with what's been happening at Extreme. Let's share uh, with our audience what, what we've been seeing. Well, CRM is over. That's it. We're done. That's oh. true. It's now Dynamics 365. That's exactly. Right. It's been renamed. That's right. So, uh, yeah. And we have we had, uh, on my session, I had a dollar jar where uh, I, I swore to put a dollar every time I say CRM. So mm -hmm. I, I collected like $8 or something like nice. this. I did manage. I was watching myself, but couldn't resist. So I kept saying like, Dynamics is uh, zero, uh, 365. <laughs> exactly. <Ka -ching. laughs> exactly. So uh, it's hard, but a lot of things, a lot of new things. Uh, some of the things like people under NDA mm -hmm. uh, on preview programs, so MVPs, uh, <coughs> knew before that something's coming right. now some of them became official so now it's uh, not a secret some of the cool and new things come in in spring release so okay. it's it's in uh, full swing the the development of things of course my favorite uh source of information was matt barber who delivered like three or four sessions all like Kick, kick solid bus, content. solid, yeah, yeah absolutely, and he knows his stuff. So. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, uh, yes, you. I mean, it, I think the event has been has been great. Um, obviously, this is why we we keep coming to Extreme, have the ability to interact with other partners and all of that. Obviously, day one, as it's been tradition for a few years now, we had the uh, innovation challenge. No, you couldn't resist, could you? We had, well, I mean, that's what happened on the first day, right? We had uh, about 20 people, was it, I think? Yeah, 20. Uh, a little bit over 20 people participate, four teams, four great ideas. Uh, this year, I think it was special because on the previous year, there's always a team that cannot get it done, right? There's always a team that started with their idea and then you went over their head, but I think that we're getting better at mentoring these guys so the mvps that were there mentoring and uh, and, and some yeah, of us didn't actually work for yeah them. and right. <laughs> and even the non-mvps the mentor uh, also did a great job you know we, we set the expectation from the beginning which is guys there's no point on picking an idea that you're not going to finish and show anybody the idea is to I grab thought, something I thought the first idea was actually doable and uh quite nice which like one was it was that? plain and i, th I thought you you had the great line opening like uh Project, project uh, timesheets, project entry, gamification of that. Of, 
Oh, because time people hate tracking. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah time yeah. track. Because it's people true. hate doing it. If you gamify it, that's probably one of the things where I hate those little stickers, right? right. What it's like Crash Candy Saga for adults. It's like what guys get yeah. real, right? right. Um, but this is one of the things where I see it, like you can gamify if you can gamify, gamify it. Entry, yeah, yeah, it might might great, happen. Uh, like time entries. Great option, but yeah, like like every year or or every extreme because we also do it in in the EMEA version of extreme. We had. Great ideas, four teams picked ideas, they all made it happen, they all presented it, um, it was great. Um, and then in addition to that, to that, obviously we had some great sessions, great speakers. I, I spent some of the time obviously preparing for my sessions and preparing the, for the Innovation Challenge, which I actually got to participate on this year. Before I was only a mentor, but this year I was with a team and that was pretty cool. But uh, you know, I joined a few sessions, uh, mainly sessions around the stuff that I'm most interested about. Uh, my favorite session today was about uh, the, the the future plans of the exchange integration. Uh, we had uh, one of the um, uh, solution architects from the Microsoft product team talk about their vision for the future, what they think the integration with exchange is going to be. It was uh, really, really clear to see that they are thinking about going beyond what, what's out out there, which is the, uh, the customer insights and stuff, or the relationship insights. Mm-hmm functionality so that, that was really good and then there was a session about performance for CRM online how to improve performance uh, great insights about express route which a lot of people don't know about so right. he went into great detail about that and one thing I didn't know which was depending on your location in the world express routes express route might not make sense if you still have to go through like the public internet to get to the express route hub it's still gonna be slow no matter how much you pay so anyway it was it was yeah, pretty that's, technical. Uh, that's coming from the person who's got gigabit at home right yeah, exactly I got exactly. gigabit at home right that's right but it, it was it was super interesting that that session was good um, and uh, yeah, so anyway, the the sessions have been great, speakers have been great, and um, people. As What's always, the news? Tell, tell us the news from your point of view. The news from my point of view. I mean, I think obviously the whole uh, Dynamics 365 uh, pushing forward with all of these integrations with Exchange and the the customer insights, and obviously, I think for me the biggest news this week was the final uh, clearing of the acquisition of LinkedIn. Just thinking oh, about yes, it the capabilities, right? But so. they say it's interesting how they approached it because there was direct question. So what we're going to do right. with that data? And the answer was, well, you're going to do nothing exactly with that data. Exactly. Because LinkedIn policy is people first. So right. when you submit data to LinkedIn, they honor your commitment. And that's how they build trust. Right. So, um, so the way you're going to get access to LinkedIn data from CRM it's uh, what's the product they use? Sales Navigator. Sales Navigator. So mm-hmm. y- we will get access to the Sales Navigator. Sales Navigator will integrate with CRM. Mm-hmm. Uh, there probably will be extra charge, so you will still sure. have oh, like sure. with, uh, uh, you still have to buy a subscription. Yeah, it'll be a component. The da- but the data will flow and apparently will flow in both directions. So that's awesome. Um, but no, you're not getting clean sweep or, right. or for 650 million people right. Uh, import. Right. Uh, <laughs> into <laughs> zero. Right. And, 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 there's, and uh, there's no, there's not going to be an API for Salesforce now. That's correct? true. Yeah, yeah. And that, I mean, I, I would be very concerned if I was any other CRM player out there, not just the leader, Salesforce right. with the biggest market share, but any of the small ones or whatever. Now the premier professional social network is owned by the company with one of the best CRM systems right. in the world. The only CRM system that can integrate seamlessly with Exchange and SharePoint and all of these other, you know, business solutions. So, I mean, I only see a bright future for Microsoft Dynamics yes. 365. Speaking of bright future, my um, w- one of my favorite upcoming features that we couldn't talk about before, now it's in, all in the open and they target in spring, is a drum roll customer control framework yeah. apparently they're running out of three letter abbreviations yes. because ccf used to stand for customer care framework I, i'm just glad they didn't try to insert the word insights into that, the customer control that was framework. a plus yeah so, that's right anyway so customer uh custom control framework not customer no did i say customer you did no. say customer first. no no it's custom control framework right. so basically when you want something fancy from your ui when you want something um uh, something done you want, I don't know, editable grid. Um, yeah. You can say hello, goodbye to uh, your uh, iframing mm-hmm. because currently the only option is you put the web resource right. and uh, you put your stuff in and then you have all this mumbo jumbo with JavaScript right. to communicate to CRM data and back. Now, 
we're going to have uh, a framework which is as far as i know be based on react mm -hmm. for those you know javascript uh, would appreciate that and then you can add on top of that any javascript framework of your choice if you fancy angular you can add bring it in and then you start building your control so framework would provide you with data binding facilities and would host your control for you mm -hmm. um, so you can create some fancy controls and they will become first class controls on the web and on the mobile so just to give you an idea of what you can do with the framework the data grid the editable grid that you see in the current release mm -hmm. is actually built using this framework yeah so you can build better grid if right. you want to yeah or right. some well, and, and that's fancy, important yeah. that's important to know because when we had our mvp session this morning uh the first session of the day was uh you know one hour and 15 minute unscripted session with i think there were about eight mvps in there right eight to ten mvps yeah. uh, from all you know diverse backgrounds and, and skills and i mean some of the questions were about editable grids were about some of the new functionality right like i see this new functionality can i do this can i do that can it so you know for us it was interesting to tackle what other partners are thinking about and sort of uh expand the capabilities of the functionality you but know what was the most interesting fact from this session we always ask this question on these sessions anyone on crm4 that right. was the first time, first time in years no hands up, no hands up. that's great yeah so yeah about time. Are moving and we, we did get a bunch of questions about emails right email templates yeah, the, email this email yeah. that yeah. wow but yeah. yeah, I stand by what I said. Uh, I said that email editor, yeah, I appreciate basically. Can we have a better email editor? And said, yeah, well, the existing one sucks. I don't, I don't know what's up with that. But the good news is with custom control framework, you can now <laughs> you write can your own. Do it yourself. Do it yeah. yourself. Use a, a FC editor or whatever, Get FK editor it. or whatever. whatever's so, the so editor. how do you see a uh, couple things on this custom control framework? How do you see that getting expanded in the ISV community? as well as just tools for implementation. Do you see partners coming out with custom controls to sell, to offer? That's that's interesting question. Um, I had a conversation this morning with uh, Ryan Plourd, uh, who, is, uh, uh, who is in charge, uh, he's creator of the Able Bridge mm -hmm. Editable Grid, which is one of the most popular. Right. And, uh, and I said, how do you see the future? Like, do you see competition from Microsoft and uh, how it's gonna pan out? And the, the interesting uh, part of his uh, answer was that he doesn't see the editable part of the grid as their differentiating factor. He said, yeah, it came as an afterthought that you can edit. Their IP is in a whole scripting library built around this control, right. which allows implementers to do things quickly and very fancy things mm -hmm. very, very quickly mm -hmm. inside the grid. So it's basically, it's a scripting library. So when you go to the Microsoft grid, for example, um, there is some access to the data on the grid, but there is nothing more. There's no fancy stuff going on. Mm -hmm. It's not a comprehensive uh, library. So uh, Ryan was saying that, yeah, it's it's quite possible. They're thinking of perhaps, and said, why, why don't you kind of decouple the library and see if that has value because that's what your IP is. So I see that people creating, for example, controls where the value is not so much in visual part, but in additional functionality because you can talk to other services. You can talk to CRM. You can create um, kind of uh, libraries for developers. Mm -hmm. I don't see libraries created for consumers, mm -hmm. though I would probably probably say that uh, perhaps there would be one or two ISVs who would specialize in controls and deliver control libraries. Right. Like he's the library of 12 controls that kind of change your life. Right. You know, um, so yeah, I, I see that. That's pro uh, not not like 20, 20 ISVs, but I can see that one or two who just specialize in that uh, making, making good money. Um, speaking of which, like, um, my second favorite uh, track, let's put it this way, it's not a single session, it was kind of a series of sessions that I went to, they relate to app source. Mm -hmm. So I was curious as ISV myself, so I was curious, what does it take to get published, what's going on, right. and yeah. uh, what their plans are, and definitely it's, it's full steam ahead. Um, there is, uh, what they concentrating <coughs> on right now is on um, approval process it's a lengthy process so it's basically um, 
it's a lengthy process so they raise the bar remember pinpoint you just right. shove yourself in and you you push yourself in right. you make room for yourself and it's kind of wiggle in and yeah. you in come and, on in yeah everybody. come on in everyone in and that <laughs> exactly. lowered the bar and sort of everyone in really? and no one would trust no it, yeah. yeah here they create an exactly that's the word they were you that that was used over and over like creating level of trust Correct. and they said look we can list there is actually the list operation they haven't used it yet but it's there so if you're not actively upgrading your product if you're not following leads they would supply there's a lead stream coming mm -hmm. your way if you're not following that they they're gonna kick, they, they're gonna kick you right. out nice. so and you have to you have to be able to provide support for it too yeah it's support and um, yeah, so it's uh, it's actually great to see that they make an investment. And look, the podcast is just not enough time to talk right. about all the goodness, about all the petitioning. Right. Like they really concentrate. And I've seen the shift uh, and both from logical point of view, they're saying, oh, now you have sales and you have this and this. It's kind of feels artificial. Mm -hmm. But the more they, they dug into technical side of things, I realized that that will come it's not there it yet the right uh, no no the, what will come is actually separation and separation in terms of licensing uh, that will uh, create compartments where like sales will live where this will live and isvs in particular for example one of the implications is that you have to think what where your solution crosses those boundaries right. because for example if you sell something for sales module right uh, you sell s solution for sales module you know that customer can, can come in what the sales module 60 dollars 8 40 dollars 95 single module for a single module, okay yes. let, let's say 95 dollars sales right because there's lots of goodness uh, sales include portals so there's right. a lot of goodness yeah. involved yeah. right anyway so it's 95 dollars and then you extend your solution and suddenly you start using entities that are part of uh, customer service Oh, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal that technically your customer can no longer use your solution right. without bumping their license. Correct. You got getting up right. plan. Getting the, plan. either on plan or buying the second second app, whatever makes sense. Right. So right. there's a lot of things. There's a lot of right. thinking to be done. So yeah, um, lots of good stuff. Lot of uh, so now it's the time I encourage people who are not here for uh, um, for whatever reason, well, there are <coughs> two things. One is why you're not here and come in next year or right. come into EMEA in Lisbon in 2017. Yeah. Um, and uh, to the first ever Extreme 365. Yeah, right. that's right. right. It's not been renamed. And the second thing is read on the materials. They, they, they're going to be posted uh, on the site. Read on all the materials, follow up and do some thinking because 2017 going to be. Yeah, there's so much to talk great. about now that you brought up the whole licensing thing the whole business editions versus uh, the enterprise edition, right. like all of that also took a lot of time of, of discussion and what's gonna be available now, what's gonna be available in the future, customers that are transitioning, if your contract is expiring in like March, what's that gonna look like? I mean, there are so many details available now and they're going to change as so, well. So Gus, you won an innovation challenge, right? I did. We did. Well, I thought, yeah. My team I, I did. Thought, yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you did say <laughs> I did. <laughs> Looking wow. at your presentation, one would think that you did it all. <laughs> but anyway, it was it was great. It was great. It was uh, it, it, it was uh, it was a good win. Um, but anyway, so but but then you had the best best uh, uh people on your team right so you scooped them all i did i had a pretty uh you know pretty awesome team uh, we had we had uh chris Dew from smart connect the guy's uh, director of product right so yeah. he knows how to build oh that's why i didn't it. see him during the product build he was, right. he was uh he was there you know helping he was networking out. behind the scenes that's right. exactly <laughs> so, he was uh, campaigning yeah. for selling us. product before yeah. it's even built getting yeah. us investors that's right. uh we had um Andre Butenko, who is a Microsoft MVP, and he had all the development. He was our lead developer since he was yeah. our only developer. Yeah. And uh, he, he, he was both junior code. and lead. Exactly, yeah. he was junior, lead, manager, developer, manager, okay. everything. Uh, and then the other guy that was in my team was, uh, you know, the CRM chart guy, superstar Ulrich Carlson, uh, yeah. which happens to be a guest on the show today. Yeah, I thought I thought what uh, Ulrich, what you did was great. So, uh, like the, you. The chatting part, which Thank was you. like 
technically was the Sean, it was the only real part of the sure. uh, their presentation. Oh, oh, oh. Sure. So yeah, sure, everybody uh, knows that. Everybody but knows yeah, that. yeah tell us, the, uh, like, what's... Um, one yeah. of the brand new features that we, we got to play with, because we actually had connected field services installed, which only came, came out just about a week ago. Right. Yeah. And we were actually able to get it all set up and set it up with uh, enabled Power BI for us. We actually had a live streaming dashboard on stage. I don't know if you can actually and let tell. Me, let, let, let's let's actually talk about, let's talk about what the idea was, on. right? Our, our uh, winning idea. Uh, which, by the way, the name of our team was Extreme Demo Magic 365. That was the name of our team. <laughs> um, but anyway, so our idea was to leverage connected uh, field service and IoT to based on basically a stream of data coming from sensors that were measuring things like temperature and whatnot to have cases no, no, created. No, no, wait, wait a minute. Let me stop, Emergency Let me stop, stop you right there. Me because if people, I was doing people a still job. think IoT stands for Internet of Things, well, according to field services installation, it's Internet of Temperatures. Well, because yeah, okay. Well, that, <laughs> because so anyway, we had, we had a bunch of uh, sensors basically feeding temperatures from oil tanks. Um, and then once an, an oil tank went above... Mean one fake website feeding... That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, when, once you went above 120 degrees Celsius, then a new uh, a case was created. Emergency uh, vehicles were dispatched, and the great idea. And what we did was we connected a network of drones, enterprise drones that were shipped which on you site had spare. with a 4G LTE <laughs> connection nice. and a live feed video feed back into Dynamic CRM. So we we demo the whole thing. And uh, that's that's what Oregon was talking about. That the the feed from the sensors, the temperature sensors, is what we were showing on the Power BI stuff. Right? Now, now were those drones provided to you by a large, uh, large man that looks something like Frankenstein walking around? <laughs> They yeah, were Ukrainian they, drones because yeah, Ukrainian the feed drones, was from yeah. the fire. <laughs> it was awesome. somewhere. Yeah, exactly. it was awesome. But uh, yeah, so, someone mentioned during the, the that you were a bit too late, guys, with your preventive maintenance. <laughs> <laughs> it was like fire, you know, 50, 50 feet high fireball. Exactly. The, yeah. But yeah. anyway, the interesting right. part, like I'm interested, like what part of um, what's the feature of Power BI you use, like to to get streaming data? It can come like. You know, thousands, hundred thousands readings per second. Sure, right? Yeah. So it's a stream. It's a huge stream. So yeah, what so, what do you so use with Power BI? We connect the field services. We enable Power BI in the process, and they'll set up an Azure SQL database. So that's actually the one that we're connecting to. The data that you saw inside Dynamics 365 was actually not CRM or Dynamics 365 data. It was all coming from the Azure, from all the readings on the uh, simulated sens sensors we had set up. So that's about the data that you could see coming in, and you could actually see like the charts move on the screen as we were going through. But it. that's that's the feature of uh, the uh, Power BI, the streaming yeah. Power BI, so or was what? What is called? Power BI dashboard that we had enabled inside Dynamics 365, just using the standard features. And one of the but enabling Power BI dashboards in, inside Dynamics 365 isn't necessarily a new thing. But what's really cool was that it was actually connected to that Azure SQL database, so it's a streaming source. So you, you declare a database as streaming source. Can't you feed directly from the stream into Power BI or you have to drop it into Azure, uh, into SQL first? Uh, so the IoT hub uh, is what manages this and sets up the Azure SQL database and drops oh, Okay, so it's data. all like taking care of it yeah, so and you just point it. It's actually a fairly straightforward yeah. process to get started on connected field services. You set it up and then it sets up like 20 some Azure services for you so you don't have to. Yeah. You just have to go in and fix a few settings once it's all set up. No, it's, it's good that at least Power BI are working. That I, I, I have to say that we went through the in our exercise what we did. We didn't win, but we actually did manage to create an end-to-end -end solution. And the working one, uh, uh, we had a particle I.O., which is basically a little box. Uh, with sensors like GPS movement, uh, you can buy temperature sensors and mm -hmm. things what's not. So it's a tiny box, costs like, I don't know, $50 or whatever. Um, so we managed to get the feed from that device. Uh, we also installed the... With uh, a one connected. hour delay, but... No, no, no. The feed was actually <laughs> real. That's, a, that's another thing I want to, uh, want to warn people about. The one thing, when you install... Uh, connected field services. It installs great infrastructure. It installs streaming, all the sort of stuff. So device readings do come through and you can see them and they come through into Logic App. That's where the 
difficult part begins because when it installs it assumes the IoT is Internet of Temperatures. You can see temperature references hot coded left and right. <laughs> so like select statements and what's not. So it took us a while to actually get this data, massage it and put into uh, uh, feed it into logic apps. Yeah. And then once it's in logic apps, took a, a bit to get used to and correct syntax, feed it into CRM as well. But then we decided to use flow to send SMS message, uh, SMS message to a person. Uh, that's where we hit the roadblock, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, people ask me, what's the difference between Flow and Logic Apps? Um, well, the SMS message we received like one, one hour later. Um, so everything was working until it hits Flow with the SMS message. So when people ask, what's the difference between Flow and um, who asked this question? Logic Apps. People who went to my session, I was talking about oh. here, uh, Dynamics 365 and Azure. So, um, what's so the your difference an, is... Your answer is in an hour. Uh, flow, <laughs> exactly. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, flow... Anyways, the problem is that their, their premise was a good one, which yeah. is, you're going to put these devices on cars. If you are, like, monitoring via GPS, you can put, like, a geofencing around it. If you're getting close to getting out of your geofence, then you can get a text message just text message letting you know you like, get it and you're walk. going too far right. we're gonna shut down your car if you no, at stay. least at least people who pick up your body from the morgue they will get the message exactly right? it's, it's like so, on your phone so that that's the interesting part like all of that made a lot of sense but then when the text message takes an hour to be received yeah. that's but what i'm saying is that flow doesn't have uh, slas on, on, that, right. on that right so uh, if you want slas if you want delivery of your messages actually use logic apps and they built on the same flow is built on logic apps on top right. on top of logic apps so it's uh, quite a quite a nice thing so um but what was the winner for us i think was uh the fact that the after picture all of leonardo the dicaprio that was winner for you <laughs> the after all the automation we had this uh drone live feed direct inside of dynamic crm that That's was cool. that was awesome That's i'll, what I'll Andy make did. i'll make the quote jesse for you live around the, the <laughs> live the live feed. streaming uh yeah of, of data which is basically our our complement to connect the field service yeah it's cool to see sensors and gauges going up and down but the idea of the drone is it gives you eyes in the location no, it proves to me drone. once again that it's actually awesome. people who can do <coughs> stuff Cannot sell shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, I, gotta say, I thought it was uh, amazing like that we opinion. had those, those sensors. <coughs> you know, we were switching the, the temperature on the simulated sensors. We would be able to see that change in the charts in the Power BI dashboard in CRM or Dynamics 365 about 30 some seconds later from when we actually made those changes on there. And but that's because we set it at 30 seconds, but we can probably go all the way down so to speaking of like, like, real time. Yeah. You're dealing with charts and visualizations yeah. uh where do you see it's all going like power bi i understand it's a cool thing it's like excel on steroids to me right right yeah. uh, when i go in and i actually had power excel user who i installed them the desktop power bi desktop and they were up and running like in four hours and started creating stuff some certainly you have to learn new yeah. things but generally feels very powerful but then again, to me, it's anonymous data. So you're collecting it all and you present it all. There is no filtering by user. Where do you see all it all going? So and where the chats? Time. Is that the end of the chat guy in CRM? So I, I may have it's to think of a new name. Power BI guys. Power guys. That's, guy. Sorry, Power BI is it's taken. That's called Sewell. Yeah. Yeah. Bye guy. Bye guy. No. I got I mean, well, that. Was... I meant I meant yeah. the I. Bye. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So where, see, yeah. where, where so, you say it's all good? So, Power BI is definitely getting more and more integrated into, into Dynamics 365. Even one of the things we showed today was we actually had a Power BI tile on an individual asset. So you could see the specific information from Power BI just specific to that asset on a form inside Dynamics 365, which is one of the new things that's been coming out. So you can actually filter by, let's say, by an asset or yes. the, your data yeah, streams. Yeah, this one's specifically oh, okay. by the device ID. So it's only showing information that pertains to that specific record. Oh, and that's that was, cool. And that was a system... Uh, system visualization yes, or, that or is personal? a part of the connected field services. Okay. Uh, personal one, so you can't drop on system. That, that, that does it. That's what it is. Otherwise, you have to jump through some uh, some hoops to get get that piece uh, set up. 
So it wasn't very clearly that they haven't done anything with the built-in charting engine um, for the last four years. So basically, mm -hmm. any blog post I've written for the past four or five years still applies. <laughs> That's true. To it. You're That's gonna awesome. live forever. <laughs> That's what you call longevity. You know? Anyway. Yeah. Hey, look, there are still some people who write an article. I know this guy who writes about Win32 API. He's a Microsoft guy. He's like genius. He still writes blog posts about Win32 API. Wow. Go figure. So the, the new piece that, that's coming out is the, the customer insights, which is right. a, an Azure service mm -hmm. that you have to subscribe to on Azure. And it seems like that's the direction that Microsoft headed in the sense that they're going to take all the data out of CRM, do something with it in Azure, and basically post those charts back into CRM so you can use them there. But can you use something besides CRM as your data sources? Yes, you'll be able to do that in custom insights too. So right now it's only, and it's a preview, so it's only supporting uh, Dynamics uh, as a connector. And then it can connect to like an Azure Blob Star, so you can have some CSV files, but more connectors are, are coming. So it's interesting that they're moving away from using just using data inside Dynamics to taking it out in Azure, do something with it, put it back in. And that's where the relationship analytics that we probably all seen a lot mm -hmm. of demos on recently looks really nice and it's taking all these like recency and relevance and right. who initiated what appointments and emails to figure out what what is your relationship per specific opportunity and right. have some really cool bubble charts and you can click on the bubbles and it'll open up the opportunity and all those nice things all that is driven off customer insights so the relationship analytics solution once it becomes available will take the information send it to customer insights so if you want to use relationship analytics you also have to pay for customer insights subscription a service. Ah, I don't, you don't really see that anywhere no. in the documentation, but it's going to cost you a minimum of two hundred and fifty dollars per month to use relationship analytics once it's available. Uh, how you find like when when you go to the customer, right? Um, the one of the challenges we we did discuss it a lot recently, and one of the challenges is that was the challenge with social engagement. Right. right? Great idea. You come to the customer, and then you've got nothing. To show you've got nothing to show because it takes like 17 weeks to collect any meaningful stats mm -hmm. yeah. right so the same with relationship insights for example or customer insights right so relationship insight in particular it feeds on exchange data right and CRM yeah. and CRM so CRM and exchange so it lives in CRM mm -hmm. you don't pay extra for it but it sits there but it needs some data to digest right so it needs like months and months of emails to tell you that you're neglecting someone because right. at the point of demo you're going to be neglecting everyone right so how do you do your demos when you need to show you know bubbly data and uh, lots of charts great, great question i actually saw saw a presentation today with um, a data scientist from microsoft who was talking about these models and how they use them and that was one of my questions like how much how many opportunities do you need to get meaningful data out of this like minimum 500 like does it make any sense even think about it if you only have like two three hundred and he was like well we use it on our microsoft data we have like ten thousand opportunities uh, at any well, given second most, most people don't, <laughs> yeah. don't work with that it's a streaming data, data. Yeah. You, you need a hub streaming so, hub. so but as long um, the point was, as long as you keep it simple you can get meaningful data out of it so you have opportunities you don't have too many different directions or different services you can provide for those opportunities then you can get some meaningful data out of it. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how reliable it will be, but it's one of those things where you can't really tell until, um, until you've spent, used it for a couple of years. Yeah, um, I, I told people that, uh, I, um, that one of the great data sources I came across, if you go to U.S. government uh, site, mm -hmm. they actually have a dedicated data site, like collected data, right. public data, right. uh, from all over the US, mm -hmm. huge data sets, huge, mm -hmm. whatever you want. It's like temperature, demographics, you know, sales data, crime, crime statistics. Crime statistics. Yeah. And in fact, Scott Searle was, yep. uh, was doing presentation at some point, long time ago. Uh, New York has its own sets of data, yeah. city of New York, and he collected weather uh, crimes and uh, like he ch he plotted it uh, through the time and he figured that the safest time to walk in New York would be on Tuesday 5 a.m. in the morning after heavy rain. 
Yeah. You've got the least chances to get killed yeah. on Mars in cool. New York. <laughs> that was cool. cool. But Which to... was like one in three. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Pretty much. The yeah. lowest chance. Yeah. So um so I'm saying that if you if you want to do some presentation on big data sets, take the real data available publicly. Right. Like census data available right. publicly, right? They obviously anonymize it, but generally speaking, like religion, age, gender, right. occupation, right. you've got it all. So if you feed it into CRM if it's relevant to what you're doing, you can plot the charts and what's not. Yeah. But you can't use this data for, say, relationship insights. You need That's emails. True. Right. I was, I was actually surprised when I set up relationship insights the first time. I was trying to send a few emails, set off the different action cards. It actually wasn't that bad. I was actually very impressed how fast I could send an email, log in as a different user, read it, play it on the attachment. Basically, go back to my other user who sent the email mm -hmm. on CRM. And you know, within a few minutes, those action cards started appearing. Say, hey, this person read your email. This person like looked at your attachment. Mm -hmm. It's all coming up right this, there. And this person like, stands right things. behind you yeah. right yeah. this moment. Yeah. Well, because he does tell you they open it from an iPhone yeah. or whatever, right? It gives yeah, you a yeah, look. Yeah, it's actually cool. What I what I told people, and, and I'm interested, curious to see it because we, we're upgrading our, our production uh, when it's available now. Oh yeah, upgrades now can be scheduled. So uh, to online in online, mm -hmm. so now it's open and you can schedule. But the earliest you can schedule, for a variety of reasons, is January. It's a holiday season, blah blah right. blah. So right. it's a ramping up. New features still getting released. So when you upgrade, I'm gonna feed my customer interaction with my customer. So if I need to demo something, I will go. I will tailor the demo so there is no sens sensitive data leak. Right, so I will tailor the forms, but I will show to a customer, to a prospect, interactions with them, right? And say, like, he is you opened the email, the, you read this, and here we are sitting, and I'm right. still trying to sell you the product, right? You know, so that's kind of feed it on your data, so don't send it to yourself, but send it to your customers and see how they open the email, and then use that. And how much, how much have you used, you know, taking the flat data and pushing it into customer insights? Starting in the blob, because when I talk when I talk to to someone from Microsoft at CRM UG Summit talking about customer insights, they're talking about how it looks at the it looks at the data in the file and it understands what type of data it is and then it pushes it in respectively. Yeah, so when you set up customer insights and you connect it to your Dynamics 365 environment, it'll load all the entities in there. Mm -hmm. You have to look through them and define which ones are your profiles and which one are your interactions. Mm -hmm. So the profiles are all your customers, accounts, anything that you want uh, as your focus point from your different panels. Uh, all the interactions are basically all your activities, your emails, tasks, appointments, um, purchase transactions, etc. wherever they're coming from. And then you pull all that information in there. So you'll define th these are profiles, these are interactions. Um, set up, finish the, the connection. Basically, just click OK. Mm -hmm. You'll pu start pulling all, pulling all the information. And then you can start working with the data, pull, establish all the links. You can start working with the data, put up KPIs, and start creating your customer insights panels that you can either embed inside Dynamics 365, or you can use the customer insights application by itself. Which is how you see it in some of the some of the demos. So, do you see this becoming more of a? I don't want to say an integration hub, but you're as you're pulling data in from other third-party systems, like back office systems, to aggregate that information against your CRM data. Do you see that becoming more of a trend, in, using it in that fashion, and then pumping it into CRM in that way, rather than the straight integration paths that we've been seeing historically? So I, I really see how they're using customer insights and also how they're using relationship analytics. To me, it looks like that's how Microsoft will be working with, with charts and analytics inside Dynamics 365 mm -hmm. in the future. So they take it out, model it, put it back in. And I'm guessing it's just put less stress on the server because when you're using charts now, all the built-in charts and views, you know, you're running those queries every single time. And you can make some pretty advanced charts in there and you'll obviously put, put more and more stress on the on the performance of the server. So by taking all the information out, do all the calculations, do whatever you want, um, like what Power BI is doing, and then it just basically puts the visual back into CRM. That's the only thing that you have to load. You don't actually have to query all the data every time you open up a new phone because the visual is already read, ready and updated on 15 minutes interval. 
Jeez. But you also lose, look, with straightforward integration, you, you, you forgot about one critical piece that customer insights go through some intelligence. Sure. So they go through Katana intelligence, so they, they feed them, they learn, they mm -hmm. figure out why you're not selling anything. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we did discuss that, right? So Katana telling you as it is. I'm gonna close this sale. You just, Whoa. you just Try again got Cortana. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she's yeah, watching. Awesome. Yeah. awesome. She's Cortana watching. just answered us. Um, okay, so, you know, things like the, the when they release the Excel templates, when you can do the pipeline, you know, opportunity pipeline dashboard within an Excel template. Um, are, you, are, are, we, are we looking at potentially down the road where instead of having pivot tables and pivot charts, you could have Power BI based charts and visualizations within that kind of capability. So, I still see Power BI as a tool that you use for reporting on all your data. That's where you still take your data out and you, you get the, like the big picture of it. Mm -hmm. Customer insights, um, to me, it's something that you need your administrator, somebody who like can connect to Azure. Somebody needs to like go in and connect to the data source, set up the different KPIs, and someone who has two hundred fifty dollars. Um, whereas Customer the uh, Excel templates and put taking data out of Excel no. like all the ad hoc reporting basically right. no relationship with that. Customer. Um, so the users power users etc will probably be using the Excel templates uh, and the Excel pivot tables and all those features in order to get there you know do the day to day ad hoc analysis whereas customer insights and relationship and really so like pre-made uh, insights uh, and analytics made by someone who like knows your organization, sets it up and updates it on you know, annual intervals or every other month or something, depending on the information that they're giving back. But it's not something each individual can go in and change and put together. Once you get your customer insights charts delivered on your form or your application, that's that's what they look like. You can't as a user just go in and start changing them like you can right. with, with charts today or okay. an Excel template. For example. So you see that. Uh, so you, what, what you're saying is that uh, the fact that uh, uh, you cannot slice a present in Power BI by user identity, for example, uh, it's a bit irrelevant because you're saying that Power BI is kind of not designed to do that anyway. So right. yeah. You can, okay. you can make some workarounds and depending how you work with the data. No, but I wonder if, it's it's if it's going to come. But yeah, I remember back analytic services to build the cubes they used like 15 years ago. You right. say, okay, you feed all the data and say, okay, come back tomorrow right. when cubes are built. So what Power BI is doing, it's like amazing compared to right. what we used to have, right? So it right. takes like a few days to calculate multiple dimensions and then come back. Maybe I'll show you something. Yeah. Um, I mean, the integration is getting tight and tight because now you have those options to, you know, create a link, see on tip of the day, 782, you know, create a link in Power BI, it'll take you directly to the record. You can create links on those records that takes you straight back to the Power BI, even filter, straight back to report filter to that specific record. So you have those back and forth options, you know, as long as everything's online. Um, you know, it's kind of closing the gap on you know where Power BI maybe was intended towards how you could actually right. implement it. You've been doing charts like oh, forever. I, I want to say like all your life, but obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> but you must you have like out of visual. I always struggle when I do charts. I always struggle like which one to pick. So you must have like one is your favorite charts to present. That's one. Which one is your favorite type of chart? The other one, I'm curious to to hear about is which one is the most misleading like people use it all the time but it's actually it shows bullshit right <laughs> and the third it's one the most underused one like people don't show it but it's actually it would be very useful so uh, oh, those three good question so it's, it's interesting i like uh bar charts and column charts because those are like the most accurate in presenting data when you look at a column chart or a bar chart, Unless you can very easily see the amounts on them and, and you know and compare the sizes. But you can always put on logarithmic scale and suddenly all you your... You can always mess so, with the scales and yeah. uh, change it up. Uh, 
but they they truthful like Dude, they show so as it is right. and the most misleading yeah. like and you're really you want them to be as accurate or portray yeah. the truth as much as possible and they're the easiest to read by users right by people that don't know a whole lot it's like okay this bar is taller than this other bar got it there's more in this one <laughs> so than that one. okay yeah, so the, the second one the, the uh, most my, misleading my favorite one to pick on which i think is also the most misleading one is the funnel chart that they have I thought you'd say so, yeah. In the, especially the way they designed it out of the box, because it very much overemphasizes the, the top, uh, whatever you have on top, like for the initial phase. Mm -hmm. uh, if, but if you go look at the phone charts now, it's been up in the trial on 365, I think the close phase is actually on top, uh, whereas it should be on the bottom, because they didn't use the right feel to, to sort it by. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you. And that's Your sales like increase over, as you right. overemphasized by um, yeah. closing. So closing much. is the beginning. That's right. <laughs> so you know, each, if each phase had like the exact same amount in it, the top part would be about four or five times as big as the latest one. Mm. Even though they represent, oh, so the they're not using surface, just the distance. So it's actually in surface area. It's actually yeah, so, so four times. Like I ball it, like it just doesn't look right. Oh, it stands out. Yeah. And the most underused, do you see people uh, not using certain type visual? I, I think the most underutilized feature when it comes to charts is actually including the chart on records themselves. So just putting a chart on the form, adding a subgrid, and then you know scrolling down on the formatting properties, and just check the box that says display chart instead of the actual subgrid. So you can see information that relates just to that specific record. I know the perfect one. Age of the customer drawn over the years. <laughs> That's like, it's going to be the perfect, perfect line, perfect, oh, no, line, right? perfect yeah. line, yeah. It's, it's awesome. like that chart that says the number of pirates uh, with the global warming. At the what? <laughs> yeah, have you seen it? It's famous. It's like number of charts and uh, degrees, like average degrees of the earth. So it's like as the charts, as the number of pirates decrease, the temperature increases <laughs> over the decades. So, it's like, so bring a back the pirates. There's a clear connection. That bring the, back the pirates. The, 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 the decreasing number of pirates are creating global warming. So how you deal with the customers, really, <laughs> uh, like which correlate like like this sample, like false correlations, like you know, number of planes crashed in South Korea and number of people who died of shocks attacks and you find that those charts are correlate like one to one right yeah. so and there is a even website which digs into those false yeah. Yeah. correlations well, so how you deal with correlation doesn't necessarily mean causation right yeah right. yeah so, so. You, you gotta you know you still gotta put your your you know uh reality check glasses on and say does does this data actually make sense because you can run numbers but especially now we have access right. to to you know vast amounts of data and it's always fun, uh, you know, see, especially our fan election, where people basically just run statistics on everything, on how people voted versus well, what the different areas um, look like. You get, you can get some pretty state, st pretty crazy, statistically significant um, uh, data out of it, but it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, we used to have a joke long time ago that uh, it was the whole article written about danger of cucumbers, and the stats were like. 99.9% uh, .9 of people who died in airline crashes ate cucumbers in three days prior to the crash or something like that, you know, it's... Uh, Don't eat cucumbers. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're dangerous cucumbers. They're disgusting anyways, so good. <laughs> Unless so they good. pickle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think um, the interesting thing about the conference is that the one in Portugal not only is going to be the first extreme 365 conference but also is the first conference they've done where they are actually inviting customers to participate right extreme it's crm two parts yes extreme crm has been dedicated to partners mainly it's the partner conference right and now they're saying the last two days of that week on the week of march 13th in lisbon will be the customer conference is for That's customers. Right. Speaking of conferences, just today there's been blog post by Microsoft mm -hmm. that uh, announced uh, the new lineup of the conferences uh, for the 2017. One big Interesting. one missing. The one big one is missing, and guess which one? Hmm. Hmm. Starts with you, an E. Wonder if you can envision that. <laughs> yeah, one no, I, I cannot. Power envision. foresight. Anyway, envision now folded as one would expect because they basically desiccated it last year with the chopping out of everything, and uh, 
it immediately like collapsed four times and uh, now they folded it into uh, Ignite. Mm -hmm. Well, I so mean, Ignite I, I, is now gonna be like 15, 20,000 people because everything is Ignite. Yeah. And there will be Build, there will be Ignite, uh, what else? And Partner is now renamed, WPC is now renamed. Oh, it's been renamed, uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, uh, name escapes me. Look it up, please. I'm uh, doing my... But what it means is that both Extreme and CRMUG, they're going to go through the roof. They CRMUG should. Summit they're great Extreme. events. I mean, they, they should. Uh, we're not... And, and that's that's one thing that I, I think people understand is that the fact that we lost Convergence doesn't necessarily mean we're stuck with two bad events. The CRMUG Summit and Extreme are both great events. Yeah. Yeah, um, and and I'm actually impressed that the event, the Extreme EMEA, Inspire. Event, that's what it's called. I remember. Ah, Inspire. You're you right. see, I'm faster than Google. Oh, sorry, I'm faster than Sean You're faster trying than to work out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, so the other thing, the other thing is uh, that it, that I think is interesting is that the event in EMEA is always bigger than the event in the U.S. Typically, the events in the U.S. are much bigger. Interesting. But the yeah. event in EMEA is like 50% bigger. I mean, it's, wow. uh, it's a significant that, amount. I'm, I'm serious. Like, for me, it's like 30 hours to get there, but I'm seriously considering going there, definitely. Yeah. And perhaps even s sticking around and do CRMUG Summit, which is going to be first European CRMUG Summit, right? Yeah, yeah, but it's not called Summit. I think it's called Congress or something. Oh, that's, Congress I was just told today by yeah. someone from Europe. Uh, but that, still, that but still. You, 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 uh, you, I'm looking for someone from Europe. Anyone from Europe here? Um, I think it's a regional name, right? You call it Congress, it's Summit, it's uh, same no, stuff. I guess, I guess I've lived in California for too long now. <laughs> ah. yeah, any, no, anyway, I mean, it's, but, uh, but it's good to see because, I mean, here in the U.S., we've had CRM for longer than anywhere else, right? It, it was live here first. Uh, CRM Online was here available first, and then it expanded into the U.K. and then into EMEA, and it kept growing. So that means that a lot of these users are hungry for for training and for learning and to share with each other what they're going and through. You know as much as I do that in in Europe, like in countries in Europe, people do go to trainings they love their training Absolutely. the biggest classes we had were sweden germany netherlands like packed classes people are turned away and in us and australia like we struggle we cancel Sometimes. the classes because like you've got three registrations yeah 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 no absolutely i mean i i love the the emia event that it was my first event in madrid two years ago and this year i i went to poland uh, also to warsaw and it was a great event and Hopefully, I'll be there in uh, in Portugal. I mean, it's a great event. I recommend it. And I know today they were talking about. Uh, I know today they were talking about the fact that you know, like they were inviting people from Europe or whatever to attend. But I invite people from here. You know, especially if you live on the East Coast, the the flights to Europe. If you're buying way in advance, I mean, you already know it's the week of the March thirteenth. It's going to be like two and a half hours with yeah, the new planes they're building. <laughs> All right, but uh, yeah, I mean, like like I said, if you if you're on the on the East Coast, especially. You know, just get on a plane and go to Portugal. Yeah. Make For it me, it happen. doesn't matter. It's anyway, it's like, Everyone's it's over fine. 20 hours. So it's exactly. Like, I'm going to be stuffed anyway, so might as well travel to. <laughs> Unless they do it in Sydney, you're stuck. Yeah. <laughs> but it's going to hey, be I, I'm going to start lobbying 2018 Sydney. Let's, Let's do make that. it happen. Uh, I'm in. I'll, I'll organize for all the poisonous animals to cool. take vacation <laughs> for, <laughs> for three days. Which is 90% of the animals. <laughs> yeah. Including people, and kangaroos and koalas are the only, and dingoes are the only three animals that are not poisonous in the it's whole like Australia. Pe people, the one of the animals which people always think it's cute is platypus, but the, Those the bastard are... has a, a thumb <laughs> which can kill you. It's yeah. poisonous. It's got like a poisonous needle on it. Or oh my god! <laughs> it's full on gangster. <laughs> it's a gang. But remember, with the dingoes, you got to watch them around your baby. Yeah, dingo took my baby. Good point. <laughs> and on that note yes and, and on that, that bombshell <laughs> yes but I'm bummed. so uh all right so last uh last thoughts of uh of uh extreme crm what would you say to someone listening in on why they should come 
next year. Because or, it's the only place where you can sort of have these open discussions about things that affect you as a partner. The fact that you have a session about App Source and how to post your app in App Source, that just doesn't happen in the CRMG Summit or any other event. Uh, CRMG Summit obviously is great, great content. I love going to it. Um, and uh, but but just Extreme is the partner conference. If you're a partner, you need to be here. I mean, I'll, just I'll, plain I'll, and simple. I can only add a few developer. Extreme is the conference. Because it's the you place to be. You reach in different communities. So CRMUG is about wide outreach. You've got project managers. You've got end users. Mm -hmm. Very vibrant community. Excellent. But Extreme is very, uh, very technical. So if you're a partner, if you're creating for CRM, that's the place to network. That's the place to get fresh ideas. That's the place to see some developers. That's the place to communicate with Microsoft team. Yeah. Where else? I mean, we're lucky uh, being an MVP. We can like right. reach out and reach to Matt Barber, for example. Right. But for other people, uh, he's the person who creates a framework, basically. Yeah. Right. He's in charge of the framework for for you for any developer to go listen and talk. Uh, to map and get the ideas from the source and, it's just and not only that not only that the fact that in some of the sessions they did say the stuff that we're about to share is NDA don't share with other people which are things that only MVPs have access to yeah, yeah I mean you're not going to read about them in blogs and obviously yeah, we're not going to talk about it in the podcast the, the moment they said that NDA only applies to people who signed up NDA, which is us. <laughs> which is and basically it doesn't apply to anyone else. So yeah. we now in a position when we can't talk about things and the other people yeah. can. So well, I the guess. tables have turned. But yeah. anyway, if you're a partner, if We're you're a developer, if you're technical, you need to be here. I mean, yeah, it's just it's plain and simple. Yeah, the, the skills and insights that you gain by coming uh, is definitely worth the in investment. Absolutely. So, including that, like, there's like a lot of good energy on coming to the conference. So you got like a big boost on your. Yeah, on and, your and, and like I, it like feels when you months. when you go to the other conferences, it feels that you're giving more because of our experience working with it for so many years. So we're trying to help more people, mm -hmm. but Extreme is one of those like levels, right? It, it levels you. You're helping people, but you're learning so much at the same time. It's just a higher level. And the fact that they're going to, uh, you know, try to bring that level of, of clarity to users in, in Europe is pretty cool. And next year we were voting around for the next location and Vegas was winning. So uh, perhaps... I think that was... Vegas Just, will be the winner. No. I, I voted for Fort Lauderdale. I think we should go to Fort Lauderdale. Oh, that would be awesome. It would be Look, awesome. I, I think that was to crowd pleaser, but meant nothing. I mean, the decisions were to take conference. If you start taking crowd opinions into account. That's true. You're now never that, gonna leave Vegas. Now that you mentioned that, exactly, everyone. <laughs> Vegas every year. Uh, now that you mentioned that, they did do that for EMEA. They they had like a, let's vote. Prague, Portugal wasn't even on the options. Yeah, like, you know, I think Amsterdam was was the winner. Yeah. Uh, I think I voted for um, Hungary. Like, I think Prague uh, or Budapest was Budapest. There. That's what I voted for because I've never been there. I'm like, that's yeah. a perfect excuse to go uh, see Budapest. Right. Um, How about Budapest and I've been to years? Amsterdam a bunch of times, but. You know, so Amsterdam here. won, boom, out. Portugal is the winner. So you're right. It's probably going to be, you know, Kansas. <laughs> Who knows? No, right? Cleveland. Exactly. Cleveland. <laughs> Cleveland 2017. Yeah. <laughs> just doesn't sound right, does it? <laughs> well, you never know. Reception on Lake Erie. Mm. <laughs> oh, Sydney. Yeah. Newfoundland. <laughs> <laughs> It's in Sydney. Everyone goes like, "Yeah, Paris, you found them. Texas, coming to both, <laughs> both yeah. and Alabama." Yeah. Okay. Uh, the one thing I picked up from today's conversation is that we should have now two jars. One for saying CRM. So every time you say yep. CRM, you put a dollar in. Boom. Yeah. Right. Boom. Uh, and the other one, every time you say insights, you put a oh. dollar in. No, yeah. that the would second be, one's gonna be full. That would be yeah. the, the best. I, I always, I was only getting. We're tired. all gonna be able to afford tickets to go to a meet with. <laughs> I was, with I the was just class. <laughs> I was only able to mingle a little bit, but I did get to go by the inside view booth, and I. The only thing I said to him is, "How excited are you with all the inside products?" And they just yeah. looked at me like, "Go away, you hairy little man." You don't have a badge. <laughs> They didn't punch you. No. <laughs> Is that, uh, that's why you were limping, not it's because not you exactly. fell on the treadmill. <laughs> exactly. This has been CRM Audio, the Microsoft Dynamic CRM Podcast. 
You can hear previous episodes on our website, crm.audio. Subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at CRM Audio. Or leave us a comment on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash CRM podcast. If you have any topic suggestions or questions that you would like for us to answer on a future episode, please drop us an email at voice at crm.audio. Special thanks to Dale Simmons for our theme music. Go check out his website, dalesimmons.com. Please join us next time on CRM Audio.